Hello, good evening everyone, good evening and welcome. So, um, welcome to our repo class. Tonight we are going to be covering the lesson that we had to skip last Wednesday. And, uh, well, hopefully, you know, the class is going to go smoothly and we're going to be able to learn something new tonight. Um, for starters, something that we are going to be covering tonight is going to be the verbs of belief which uh, is a topic that we started mentioning two days ago. And uh, tonight we're going to continue on working with that. Um, we are also going to be following the, the um, activity or sort of activity that we had last night, which was the, um, the jokes that was supposed to be um, completely for today. But, you know, last night I got carried away and I started showing you guys some of those um some of those readings, if we, if we want to call them that. So yeah, that's also um, part of the plan for this evening. Um, then we are also going to um, talk about describing places, like what are the things that um, you look forward to when you are going to visit a city and how, or like what will be the, the things that come to be like the most important to you when it comes to describing a place, and more importantly, when it comes to describing a city. So, um, and also, of course, as you guys already know, we're gonna have the question for tonight, and tonight the question is, well, relatively simple. It's simply going to be about um, your plans for the weekend. So this is, I think, the first time that I'm going to ask you this question. Um, so yeah, that is going to be what we are going to be sharing tonight. So, let's see. If we start by hearing maybe from um, Gabriela, Gabriela Garcia. So tell us, Gabriela, what could be your plans for this coming weekend? Hi, good evening. Good evening. Um, well, good night is right. Um, well, tomorrow I have, uh, I don't know how to say, when we have a meeting, but it's for working, for uh, capacitation, I don't know how to say in English. A capacitation, I think it will be a workshop. Okay, a workshop about chemics, because I work in a company that sells chemics. So I will have that all morning. And then I have to go to short. And on Sunday, well, I will go out with my family. Great. So sounds like, you know, you're going to be busy with work, but at the same time, um, you will also make time to, your, to have some personal activities. And uh, yeah, you can say, when do you have like capacitaciones que son más que todo eh, verbales, como que son explicaciones, en este caso sería más un workshop. If we have capacitaciones que son más, eh, digamos, a la, a, a, enfocadas en la práctica, sería un training. Entonces, ambos pueden ser training, pero el workshop es más como si, como les digo, si son charlas, explicando un tema a fondo, digamos, o tratando de hablar acerca de un tema específico, so that will be a workshop. But if we do uh, more practice, that will become a training. Um, so yeah, but both are in, very similar. So yeah. yeah, in my in my case, should be like workshop because it will learn up. Uh, they will teach us about how to uh, take care of chemicals, uh, chemicals, uh, substances. Uh, substances. Uh, substances. Yeah. And it's not going to be practical. Okay. Great. Yeah. So, yeah, it will be a little bit dangerous if it was um, practical, I'll say. I don't know, in my opinion, at least from, you know, from, from this point of view. Well, great. So hopefully everything goes um, as smoothly as possible. And also, you, uh, as you mentioned, you have, you know, a great time with your family on Sunday. All right. How about the case of uh, Abby? What are your plans for this coming weekend? Um, first, I don't know if it's just me, but you hear como que te se oye muy bajito. Yes, oh, really? <laughs> that's true. 
Uh, how about now? Ya, yeah, me yeah. Sí. Ah, ok. Es que tenía el ventilador porque está haciendo calor, entonces quizás eso estaba molestando también. All right. Ok. Um, in my weekend is I do laundry <laughs> because all the, the week I have to go work. So um, tomorrow uh, I'm doing laundry. And Sunday I just are going with my family family are going church and then we go out to eat or something like that okay great so it would say it will be something like you know saturday for shores and sunday for church great <laughs> nice sounds like a you know like a regular weekend i'll say because that's what we normally do um and you know there is of course one day that we normally um dedicate to do go ahead and do laundry because it's it's very important in my case i think it's been like a month since i last did laundry i have a lot of clothes so yeah it's 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 messy right now but um i think i i should do that also this weekend i have been you know coming and going lately so it has been a little bit difficult but um great so, so on sunday i hope that you know you guys can find something fun to do you and your family so hopefully everything goes um as smoothly as possible all right how about in the case of leslie what are your plans for this coming weekend okay and um, my plans for tomorrow are to go with my friends maybe to eat um some any restaurant i think um and enjoy the rest of my weekend because I deserve. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, we deserve to rest sometimes. So it was a difficult week. Week. Yeah. So I deserve. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, maybe. I mean, I mean, you have it well deserved. If it was a tough one, of course, you deserve to rest. Um. So yeah, hopefully as well as uh, I mean, uh, with the rest of you guys, you have a great time with your friends. You know, when you go, um, eat with them or whatever it is that you guys end up doing. Uh, and uh, at the same time, that is also true. Sometimes, you know, we as humans, we do not dedicate enough time to ourselves to like take care of ourselves. And uh, there are times when it's when it's great that we think of ourselves with that, uh, you know, we don't think of like anyone else, but just ourselves because um, life is difficult at times. And uh, if you're tired, just, you know, try to make the time. Sometimes many people say that it's hard to like take a sit, like sit down for a little or rest for a little. But if you have the chance, you know, make me try to force it because it's also great for you and for your health to rest uh, from time to time. All right. How about we hear now from Melanie? Long time not um hearing from you. So Melanie. Do you have any plans for this weekend or what are your plans for the weekend? Um, I don't have plans, but tomorrow I think I will be cleaning my room <clears throat> and doing laundry. All right. And Sunday, I don't know. Just, I don't have too much to do. All right. So Sundays are normally a free day. Uh, you know, normally on Sundays we don't really have many plans. We don't have many things figured out. Uh, but hopefully you find something fun to do, or at least you know something that brings you joy. And um, uh, yeah. So for tomorrow, good luck with the cleaning and the laundry, because of course, as I said previously, it is important. It is something very important that we all have to do from time to time. Um, how about in your case, Lorena? What are your plans for this coming weekend? Mm -hmm. Today I made the, the laundry. Maybe tomorrow going to ironing. And I like to do that because when I, I am doing that and watching movies, and I, I sometimes I iron for three, four, six hours, and then I, I can watch two or three movies. And on Saturdays, late afternoon, I'm going to the church. I teach to some children and on Sunday I will visit some friends in the morning and in the afternoon I'm going to go to the theater to see a play. 
Oh, so yeah. that's where Edipo you Rey, I'm going to go. <laughs> okay, <Yeah. laughs> so that's why you wanted that phrase. Yeah. Great, that's nice. That's yeah. nice. Well done there. Okay. Ahí, de hecho, ah, aquí hay una frase que podríamos utilizar o aprender, digamos. Um, it would be something like, I see what you did there. Sí, I see what you did there. Es una frase que se utiliza para decir, ¿verdad? Ah, okay. lo que dice, I see what you did there. Sí, I see what you did there with uh, the question that you had um, last night. Well, um, so ironing, do you iron every week? Like, is that an, an every week activity or is it like once a month? It's once in 15, every two weeks, maybe. Oh, Because okay. my husband, all his his clothes is... Uh -huh has to be ironing Iron? mm -hmm. and yeah and, and then it is a lot of clothes mm. and like uh, 20 pants and 20 uh, shirts and in my dresses and then it, yeah it is all right of... so and that i like is... to do it all right <laughs> nice yeah and i mean if you say that you have time to watch movies while you're ironing so yeah that's I mean, why i like it <laughs> yeah it seems like you also have a lot of practice because when i iron i mean Probably you don't like are fully watching it, like fully paying attention. But when I iron, I feel like I put myself and my house in danger because, <laughs> yeah, I have to pay attention to what I'm doing because I have I actually burned a few sheets um, a few times. I think it has been like two or three sheets from my bed that, or bed sheets that I have uh, I have actually burned out. But yeah, you know, I have to be careful when I iron and yeah. with the rest of your weekend. Well, hopefully, you know, you have a great time at church and also you have a great time with your friends. Um, yeah. Aquí les envío otra frase que también podríamos utilizar cuando se trata de actividades que hacemos así como cada 15 días. Podríamos decir every other week. Sí, ah, every okay. other week. Ajá, eso sería como, um, por decir así, una vez cada dos semanas. O sea, a eso se va a entender, ¿verdad? Every other week. Um, same thing happens when we do things like, um, I don't know, Maybe women who like, you know, do, that rinse your hair, maybe you do it um, like once every other day. O sea, si ustedes se lavan el pelo, también no se lo lavan todos los días, ¿verdad? Sino que tal vez se lo lavan día de por medio. Entonces sería every other day. Si I rinse my hair every other day. Entonces, actividades que se hacen como de por medio se pueden utilizar every other, sí. Y luego, pues claro, el periodo de tiempo. Every o are they, are they off? Mm. Or, or when people say... day in and day out. Ah, ya. Yeah. Day in and day out. Así también. Day in and day out. Podría ser esa la otra, ¿verdad? De decir day in and day out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Day in and day out. Esa sería la otra forma de poderlo decir. So, every other um, day or day in and day out. Con la semana no, con la semana no se podría utilizar, no podríamos decir week in and week out, sino que ahí sí sería, ¿verdad? Every other week. Okay. Muy bien. Um, how about in your case, Imelda? What are your plans for this coming weekend? Well, I have only one plan. For tomorrow, maybe I, I go to do grocery. And that's all. <laughs> okay. It's not too much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, however, it's an activity that takes a long time. I mean, when, when you know, when you do groceries, normally it's something that takes takes a lot of time. So nice. I mean, yeah, yeah it's it's also uh, one of those activities that we have to do in life. It's like very common to just go to the market, supermarket. It's just a, a common thing that we have to do from time to time. All right. Um, how about in your case, Carla? What are your plans for this coming weekend? Hi, teacher. Well, uh, I classes tomorrow in the morning. Uh, the classes about a uh, diploma that I taking, and after that, I have a meeting with my family because it's my uncle's birthday, mm -hmm. and have I hope uh, there are uh, delicious food. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Maybe on Sunday, I will wash my clothes <laughs> and rest. I don't know. This day is for uh, take a rest. 
Yeah, some, some days, as I normally say, some days are simply a day off. You know, some days they shouldn't count sometimes because it's just a day that we take, you know, to go to church. Yes, some. In my case, I normally go to church on Saturday, so I have more time on Sunday. Um, I'm actually happy because in my case, for example, I am about to finish a diploma as well. I think I, I have mentioned this before. I am learning about air conditioning. So yeah, it's uh, my second to last class this Sunday. However, the only problem that I have at the moment is that next Sunday, it's right after my birthday, I will have to spend the whole day at the Institute because um, we are like a little behind because of one class. So we have to take like double classes that day. And taking double classes basically means that we're going to be there from 8 to 5 p.m. So it's going to be a tough one. However, I'm excited because right after that, in my case, my Sundays are normally just to, you know, well, Sunday mornings are for F1 because I'm a huge F1 fan, like the Formula One, Formula Uno. Um, so yeah, that Sunday mornings are for F1. I do groceries in the very, very morning, like at 6 a.m. I do groceries at 7 a.m. That's a regular schedule for races. So I'm watching F1 um, races. Then after that, I may watch a movie with my sisters. I may, I don't know, run an errand maybe, or just, you know, do something. Uh, and then in the afternoon, I normally go out. I go out either with my girlfriend or with uh, my sisters. But these few months, like since January, I think, or February, it has been very hard because I haven't really had my Sundays because my Sundays are normally dedicated to um to the classes so yeah but still it's something that is paying off because in my case well i think i am already capable i mean not think i am sure that i am already capable of installing and maintaining air conditionings so you know it's 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 a new skill it's something new that i have learned but still sometimes we have to do those sacrifices the same as you guys when you are here in these classes i feel like you know it's a sacrifice it's an hour that you're taking out of your day to be here, but still, you're learning something. Uh, how about now we hear from Luis? In your case, Luis, what are your plans for this weekend? Good evening. Good evening. So I don't have any special uh, activity. So, the same routine. <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, clean the house, mm -hmm. watch TV, <laughs> and maybe go to the supermarket and also to the market to all right a, a lot of things or food any other uh, maybe maybe on sunday uh, maybe i go out to to drink a cup of coffee yeah i like i like to drink coffee in <clears throat> any fast food restaurant but nothing special all nothing right special. Yeah, well, but maybe hopefully, I, I, I want to say that I will go to the beach, maybe, or, but but not. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, that's what's happened sometimes. In my case, I do. I do have plans for this weekend. I do have a lot of laundry to do. I ha I will not do it, however, um, because I am actually going to visit a family member in Huachapan. Uh, so I live in San Miguel tomorrow morning, like around 5 a.m. something. I'm leaving to go to Japan. I will spend the day with them and I'm coming back on Sunday because I have to go to classes. But yeah, it's going to be one of those weekends, you know, one of those very, very shaky weekends. But still, I I feel like it's fun, you know, to go see family, to spend time with them. It's always a great time. So in my case, that will be my plan for this um, coming weekend. But well, now we are going to head into the topic. Um, As I said, we didn't really finish this last time, and tonight I am planning that we finish it. So, verbs of belief. When we talk about verbs of belief, we are talking about verbs that we use when we are trying to explain a situation. However, when we explain a situation, we have different perspectives, depending on how sure we are about said situation, um, that is going to be the verb that we can use at that specific moment, all right? So what I mean by this is that sometimes we are, I don't know, gossiping maybe, 
talking to someone, sharing information, if you want to call it that, if you don't like the word gossip. Um, but we are not fully sure about what we are sharing. Like, we don't really know the whole of the situation that we are sharing. So for those moments is that we have all these different words or levels um, that we can use to explain these situations. So, for example, when we use the word assume, it means that we have an idea, but this idea is not concrete. This idea is very vacant. It's like, um, you know, we have what? Of 5% of an idea. So assuming is basically just imagining something from a little that you have seen. So that's assuming. Then we have be certain. When you are certain, it means that you are sure about that. Like, for example, if there are um, people, you know, asking you about, an, an, um, well, let's say your mother, your mother's uh, birthday, you know, your mother's birthday. And here comes this person telling you, no, your mom's birthday is not on that day. It's actually the day before or it's actually the day after. But you are certain that it is that day. So you can tell this person, no, I am certain here. The thing is, of course, that we have to change this uh, verb to correspond um, the sentence that we have in hand so or at hand. In este caso, se, se, es importante, ¿verdad? De todas estas que tienen el be, sabemos que lo vamos a tener que conjugar. No vamos a decir, I be certain. No, decimos, I am certain. I am certain. O he is certain. O, bueno, en el caso de he is, no de, vamos a decir he is certain, sino que tendríamos que decir algo como he says he is certain. Sí, en ese caso, pues no vamos a poner la palabra de otra persona como nuestra palabra, ¿verdad? Sino que vamos a decir él dice que está eh, seguro. Sí, being certain means to be sure, to be um, basically 100% sure. All right, being certain. Be positive means that um, you consider that you are right, but there is still a little doubt. Okay, you consider you're right, but there is still a little doubt. So being positive will mean something like 85% of feeling sure about something. So it's like um, if, for example, a friend has invited you to a party and they're asking you again, like, are you coming to the party tomorrow? And... Uh, you know that there might be something that interrupts you from coming to the party. So you can tell this person, yes, I'm positive. So saying that you're positive means that you have the intention of doing it, but still, you know that it is something there that can ruin your plan. So that is being positive. Then we have be sure. When you're sure, being sure and being certain is very similar, okay? But being certain is more like, for you to put your word in front of someone else's, okay? It's like if you're t trying to tell this person like you are the one who is right and the other person is not. And being sure is not like about a competition. Being sure is simply explaining that you know that it's true. Entonces, el certain es bastante como si alguien, como les decía, ¿verdad? Si alguien está tratando de decirles a ustedes esto no es así. Entonces, ustedes le dicen, no, I'm certain. O sea, como yo sé que sí es así. Entonces, eh, en español podría funcionar como el decir, estoy seguro, pero eh, no es lo mismo, ¿verdad? El decir, estoy seguro, en, con be sure. Sí, el decir be sure es como si simplemente ustedes lo dicen, pero nadie les está tratando de debatir su opinión. O sea, en el caso de, digamos, someone tells you, um, are you coming to the party tomorrow? And you can tell them, yes, I'm sure I'll go. Yes, I'm sure I'll go. Ahí no hay, ¿verdad? Una discusión. Y están ustedes diciendo de forma eh, muy concreta o expresando su opinión de forma muy con concreta acerca de lo que se está indagando. So, yes, I'm sure I'll go. So, there is no debate. There is no argument. It's simply your opinion when you say you're sure. But when you're certain, it's normally that, you, you know, you have, there is something happening when you're certain about something. All right. Then we have bet. So when we use bet, bet is normally used more in like um, friendly environments. You do not necessarily use bet 
when you were talking in a, or having a formal conversation? Because bet means apostar, see? So it, it is very common that you say, for example, we're going to talk about the party a lot. Okay, that's going to be the, the main example right now. So you are, once again, um, talking to this person who has invited you to, to the party, but this person doesn't feel sure. Like, they still feel like you are not positive that you're coming. So you can tell them, no, I bet you, I bet you. It means that you are reassuring that you're going to do that. So when you say, I bet you, or, um, bueno, de hecho, existe una forma bien particular de decir esto del bet you, que es el pecha, sí, pecha, y esa palabra, el, o la frase, ¿verdad?, del pecha, es bien de Minnesota, del lugar en donde, en donde yo tuve la oportunidad de estar, esa palabra, o sea, es una palabra, básicamente, pero son dos en una, pero la escriben como una sola, eh, incluso en, 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 en tazas o en camisas, que son de, de ese estado, ¿verdad?, se logra ver que está escrita el pecha, Sí, ahorita se las voy a mandar para que vean cómo se escribe. Pero es básicamente lo mismo que decir eh, bet you, sí, betcha. Pero, so this is for you to like reassure something, like basically clarify 100% and tell the person, no, I am sure this is happening or I'm sure this is true. Porque si estamos dispuestos a apostar sobre algo, pues significa que sí tenemos certeza, ¿verdad? De que ese algo es cierto. Okay, then we have doubt. Doubt is, of course, as you know, when there is like a situation that is not completely sure, uh, you, or you're not completely sure about it, and uh, you have your doubts, you have your reserves about certain situations. So, once again, coming back to the same example, um, this person is asking you, you know, if you're going to go to the party, but you have a doctor appointment. So you tell him or her, I doubt it. I doubt it because I have a doctor appointment. So doubt it. See, doubt, it, it will be for you to express a negative um, certainness. Like you are not um, even close from feeling sure that you're coming to the activity that you're being invited to. Okay, then we have figure. Figure is, once again, like, having an idea about something. It is very similar to assume. Figure, we, you, we can use it when we have um, something like, what you might call it? Uh, let's say that we ha we're planning something. We're planning a birthday celebration for a friend. And uh, we're not sure if this friend likes or if he or she doesn't like what we're planning, but someone has like an idea, you can say, I figured this will work better. See, sí. es básicamente como decir, me imagino, I figure. I figure this will work here, this will work there, or I figure, um, I don't know, not making it a surprise could be better. So that would be phrases that you could use or you can say with, I figure. See, sí. también se puede utilizar el figure cuando hablamos de darse cuenta de algo. O sea, también se puede. Pero el I figure, así como por sí solo, um, sería, ¿verdad? Básicamente el tener la idea de I figure. En cambio, el darse cuenta es figure out, normalmente. Es el como, es un phrase verb. So, I figured out that, it, I don't know, you were dating someone else. Sí, me di cuenta um, que te estabas viendo con alguien más. All right. Then we have guess. Guess, once again, this one is another one that is very similar to assuming um, because guessing, when you're guessing, is like you're just adivinando. Sí, I guess. Sí, uh, supongo. O sea, no vamos a decir yo adivino, pero sí, básicamente es eso, ¿verdad? Entonces sería un supongo. So I guess um, that the food is ready. I guess. I'm not sure. I am not certain. I am, of course, not positive. But I guess it is ready. Let's say, for example, that you ordered some pupusas and the lady told you, oh, yeah, the pupusas will be ready at 8.30. So right now, you can say, oh, I guess they will be ready in five minutes. Sí, supongo, 
um, que van a estar listas en cinco minutos. So that's with guessing, I guess. Then we have have a hunch. Have a hunch is when you have like um, this power, let's say, that tells you that something is, 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 is about to happen. So when you have a hunch, es como tener una corazonada. Have a hunch. Sí. So una vez más, aquí es donde entra bastante lo de los verbos, pues, de creer, ¿verdad? So verbs of belief. So have a hunch, it means that um, you assume, because assuming, as I said, is um, having an idea based on a tiny detail that you know. So having a hunch will be like assuming, you know, like I feel this is true, but I am not sure once again. So have a hunch, see? Then we have no for a fact. No for a fact is basically similar to saying being certain. It means that I know for sure, like I am completely sure that this is as I say it is. So that is no for a fact. Um, what can be said with no for a fact? I can say that I know for a fact that um, my speaker will last an hour playing music. I know for a fact that my speaker will last an hour playing music. Significa verdad que yo sé, o sea, sé o, o estoy seguro que mi bocina va a durar una hora reproduciendo música. So I know for a fact that's something that I have tested, that I have tried, and that I am sure about it. So I say I know for a fact. En el caso de utilizar being certain and knowing for a fact, eh, puede ser que el know for a fact sea incluso más certero, porque el know for a fact se utiliza para hablar acerca de cosas, ¿verdad? Como les digo, que ya tenemos pruebas, o sea, como que ya nosotros eh, pusimos a prueba esa situación y nos dimos cuenta que sí es real, sí funciona como estamos eh, compartiendo en ese momento. So, no for a fact. Then we have suppose. Well, it is very similar to the counterpart in Spanish, suponer. So, it means that, uh, once again, you have this idea about something and you simply say, I suppose, because it's like your idea. It's like something that you think is possible, but is not uh, certain at all. Okay, so I suppose it's simply that. It's a supposition. It's just an idea, but you do not have anything to back it up. And then we have suspect. Suspect is when you have ideas, when you have seen details here and there, um, and you're almost sure from reaching uh, like a conclusion. So you can suspect how something is going to happen. I suspect. All right. So. Tonight, you guys will have the chance to recover from last time's um, activity. Esta noche sí van a tener la oportunidad, ¿verdad? De reponernos un poco acerca, o oh, bueno, a, a raíz de la actividad que, que realizamos la vez pasada, que yo les dije. La idea de los breakout rooms es compartir, es eh, conversar, ¿verdad? No es llegar ahí y que cada quien trabaje por su lado. Esta noche nos vamos a dividir otra vez, ¿sí? Vamos a trabajar en dos grupos, nada más. Y esta vez solamente vamos a, a tratar de crear un ejemplo por cada una. Sí, un ejemplo por cada una de estas palabras, por cada uno de estos verbs of belief. Yo voy a estar monitoreando, ¿verdad? Ambos grupos a ver cómo estamos trabajando. So, um, I don't know. Do you guys have any questions? Um, this time, as I said, my idea, my desire is that you go and practice. You go and share and say, oh, I think this um, sentence will work. And this time I will mention leaders to the groups because when we come back, I will ask those two people uh, for the sentences. Así que lo que vamos a hacer es que voy a crear los grupos y ahorita les digo quiénes serían los líderes um, de cada uno para que al regresar esa persona va a dar los eh, ejemplos que ustedes hayan creado. So, we have the two groups, or I already have the two groups. In the first group, the leader is going to be Abby. So when we come back, Abby, you are going to be in charge of reading the examples that you guys get to create. And in group number two, the leader is going to be um, Gabriela Garcia. All right. So same thing. When we come back, uh, you bring all the sentences with you, all the examples with you, and you read them out loud. And maybe, I don't know, we can see if our examples match in a way 
or how do we do with that? All right. So any questions you guys have before I open the rooms? Okay, seems like there are no questions. Therefore, I have already opened the rooms. You guys may start joining them right now. And uh, as I said, the idea is please for you guys to share and have conversations over there. So good luck. Hi, everyone. Hi. Which the first, the first uh, word? The first is assume. Yeah, assume. Who has an idea? Who has assume? Like, um, maybe in an order, I assume you okay. understand okay, okay. me. Okay, that's true. Um, can you repeat again, please? I assume you already understand me. Understood me. Okay. Uh, which is the second one? You said thing. Who is going to, to tell the second one? Who has an idea? Be certain, right? Yeah. Certain. certain. I'm certain that tomorrow we don't have classes. We we'll have English classes. Okay. Okay. I am Sunday. Maybe, maybe that is a thing that my idea for this verb. I don't know you. Yes, I think that will be right i assume that the church will be open yes i assume the the shores will be open this next sunday maybe okay I have one sentence that say, I suppose that that girl was mean and I was right. Suppose is the, the next one barrel. No, the, the next one is be certain. But I think we can choose any one. Be sure. Be certain. Be positive. Be sure. Bet. Stop. Figure. Guess. Have a hunch. Know for a fact. Suppose and suspect. That was all. Okay. The, the second one, be sure. Be sure that. I, I I can understand you the second. Be sure. Be certain is the second. For example, suppose we suppose we go to the park.
be sure to, to drink enough water too. Be sure. No, maybe not. Um, no, yeah, it's yours is better. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, the next one, Dow. Bet. Where is it? Bet. Can no, you uh, repeat it? Hmm? The next Can one, you repeat bet. it, please. Ah, be sure, be sure to take your skills into account. Be sure to take your skills, o sea, habilidades, skills, yeah, into account. Into account. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, me. With Matt. We need one with that. Miss Dow. Before that is Dow. And maybe you don't have to doubt to yourself. Oh, you don't have to doubt yourself. Or uh, I have doubts whether to wear the red dress for the party. No, could be. Repeat it, please. Please. <laughs> yeah, please. I have do. doubt. Doubt, yeah. I have whether doubt. To wear. Where, what? Whether to wear the red dress to the party. And, uh, I have doubt. Their, their example. So I think I can read anyone. I put some sentences in the chat. I don't know if you can see this. Yes, I already write. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. Did, did this or I assume that the church will be open next Sunday. I have to be positive about my exam result. I guess we can finish the homework today. Carla is late. I suppose there are a lot of traffic. Be sure to have the money for supermarket. I have a hunch. I feel lucky. The contest? O sea, el, el concurso? Apuesto que tú vas a ganar el concurso. Yeah. I bet I bet you're going to win. Uh -huh. I bet you are going to win the contest. I bet you I bet you are going I bet you are going to win the contest. I, I bet that I that you I bet that you're going to win the contest. Okay. And then we have figure. Uh, I figure, I figure that all of us understand English very well. Figure. 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 No, because it is like imagine. Yeah. It is like imagine. I figure that at tomorrow is going to rain. It could, it could be that. I see. I figure. Or maybe um, I finally figure out. Yeah, but figure out was was uh, if you use the, the tool. In this case, we have just figure. Just figure. Yeah. Okay, I figure tomorrow we rain. Something like that you said, right? Yeah, I feel. Maybe I he know. Figure. I figure. Um. 
I'm not going you. to be. I'm not going to be on time tomorrow. No, ah. I figure, yeah, something like that's that. better. Okay. I figure. I figure that. To that. I'm not going to be. That yeah. I'm not going to be on time. Yeah. On time. To my appointment or to my reunion. Oh, yes. Who came to the party? Así como me pregunta. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uy, we don't have an... <laughs> all right so it was fun it was fun to see you guys um practice a little more um this time well i noticed that you know teamwork works better than working alone um now in room one where abby was the one in charge i could see that uh you guys were Pretty really organized, like you know, you you came up with the sentences and created. You've been read, um, written down, so that's great. Now, uh, room room number two, it doesn't mean that you guys didn't work, but the thing is that uh, you took a while. <laughs> it took you guys a while to to get some of the sentences going, but it was great. It was amazing to see you guys working. I would like to hear the sentences. I mean, I have already heard many of them, but I would like to see you know how they came out in the end, and of course, for you to share with the rest of the classmates. So, um, Abby, would you mind um, starting with your sentences? Okay, I read all of them. All right. I assume that the church will be open next Sunday. I suppose that that girl was mean and I was right. I have to be positive about my exam result. I guess we can finish the homework today. Carla is late. I suppose there are a lot of traffic. Be sure that have be sure to have the money for supermarket. I have a hunch I feel lucky. I suppose we finish. Okay, very creative. Great. Very, very nice. Um, the only one is with the traffic. I suppose there is a lot of traffic would be the proper way of writing that one down. But yeah, the rest was great. Um, there is only one. Oh, bueno, la, la otra que es command, pero igual funciona. Pero es como una forma de un command. Sería el be sure to have the money for the supermarket. Sí, ese es, o sea, suena más como una orden. Pero igual, o sea, funciona porque así se dan las órdenes. Entonces, no es que esté mal necesariamente, sino que um, en otros sentidos o en otros eh, contextos se puede utilizar también, como les decía, ya conjugado, ¿verdad? El be Um, por ejemplo, digamos que dijese, um, Jonathan is sure he has the money for the, super, so for the supermarket. Entonces, ahí sería la única, o sea, como en otros contextos puede funcionar, pero igual, esa funciona bien. Sí, es decir, be sure to have the money to the, for the supermarket. So, great. Very well done. Very, very well done. Um, how about you, Gabriela? Can we hear your examples, please? Yeah. I assume you already understood me. I'm certain that tomorrow we don't have English classes. Okay. We should be positive for our future. Be sure to take your skill into account. I bet that you're going to win the contest. Um, I have doubts about wearing the red dress at the party. I figure 
I figured that um, I'm not going to be on time to my reunion. I guess she paid the bill. I have a hunch that tomorrow it will be great. Uh, I know for the fact that I'm not alone. Uh, I supposed to finish the appointments yesterday. And last one, I suspect that that stuff isn't going to work. All right. Very nice. Very, very well done. Honestly, como no pasé todo el tiempo en el room de ustedes, yo creí que no tenían todas las, todas las oraciones. Honestamente, I, I have to be honest. I thought you only had, because when I was there, I was seeing, seeing you guys struggle with some, and I thought you were going in order, but you did have all of them. So, very good. It was a very, very good job. We Now, did. the... The only one um, that uh, we will kind of change there is the one where we use positive. Okay, positive. Because we used it in the meaning of um, as a what? It would be, hmm, we have to be positive, like as a verb, but you know, with the idea of having good thoughts. And it's not necessarily in that way. When we use it as a verb of belief, we use it more in the sense of um, that we are sure about something. We are uh, relatively sure about something. So like when you know you have a plan and you're positive that it's gonna, it's a go. So um, that's how we use it. Esa sería la única, ¿verdad? El positive se utiliza no necesariamente. Ustedes dijeron we have to be positive about our future. En ese caso suena más como debemos ser positivos acerca de nuestro futuro. Y, o sea, en ese sentido de la palabra se usa bien, pero en el sentido que la estamos viendo hoy sería diferente, porque sería más algo como um, María is positive, she will finish the homework on time. Sí, básicamente diríamos algo así en español como María está segura que va a terminar la tarea a tiempo. Entonces, eso positive va a ser más así como si fuese un sure, sí, pero se utiliza positive más que todo eh, como les decía, en contextos eh, como de amistad, contextos coloquiales, en donde vamos a estar hablando acerca de situaciones, o sea, más eh, personales, let's say. So, like, for example, if somebody asks you, are you ready? You say positive, sí. O sea, en lugar de decir, ¿verdad? Eh, sure, or yes, I'm ready, you say positive. Entonces, básicamente es un reemplazo a decir sure. So, yeah, that's positive but great very good um now to the ones who didn't work to the ones who were there you know with the in the rooms and uh you guys didn't get to work too much i invite you please try to do it because it's for your own good all right what we're trying to do here is to practice so if um you know you have these occasions where your classmates are working and they're like trying to um carry out the task at hand Uh, well, the best thing you can do is join them and try to help as well. Because, I mean, the idea is that we are going to be working together and we are working, um, you know, on this as a team. Therefore, what I'm trying to create is that, you know, the fact that you feel that you can work with one another and, of course, get to practice your English because that is the main uh, objective that we have over here. So. For next activities, this one was great, okay? I feel great with, um, you know, your development, guys. But at the same time, the ones who didn't practice, try to do it next time because it's, it's, it's for, uh, for your own good. It's the idea that we have that you get to use your English. All right. Now, we are going to read a few of these jokes. I think that I'm going to focus more on the, the longer ones because I feel like they're going to be easier to understand. Um, it's weird right because shorter sentences should be easier to understand but it's not the case when it comes to uh, a joke and neither when it comes to a second language but uh here we go i'm going to read this one and i'm going to ask from you what did you guys understand okay so what is your understanding of this joke so we have the first one a guy walks into a post office one day to see a middle-aged balding man standing at the counter systematically pasting love stems on bright pink envelopes with hearts all over them. 
He then takes out a perfume bottle and starts spraying scent all over them. The guy's curiosity gets the better of him. And he walks up to the balding man and asks him what he's doing. The man says, I'm sending out 1,000 Valentine cards signed, guess who? But why? asks the guy. The man replies, I'm a divorce lawyer. All right. So, what did you guys get from these sentences or from these jokes or lines? ¿Qué entendieron? ¿Cuál es su percepción acerca de esta, um, de esta broma? Interesante, ¿verdad? This one is a little bit better. That man was trying to um, cause problem in a, in a couple. Say, in a couple. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the couple was divorced and yeah, he he's is going getting, to divorce. No. <laughs> yeah, he is creating demand. He is creating demand for his work. Así que sí, básicamente eso es. Yes, basically, that's great. Great, great, great. All right, now, I would like to know, do you have any questions about any words in this um, short reading? No, no hay ninguna palabra que sea nueva para ustedes acá. All right. Um, so, nice. Very nice. So, in case yes, teacher, I have one. Uh -huh. uh, yes. What is balding? Balding. Balding se va a referir a alguien que se está quedando What is the meaning of balding? Yes, balding will yes, be... Yes, balding men. Balding men will be that. Uh, you know, oh. Yeah, someone who is... um going bald, someone who, someone who is losing his hair. So, balding men, o sea, no es como que sea tan drástico, pero simplemente personas que ya están así como que tienen entrada, ¿verdad? Ya son balding men, ¿sí? So, a balding man is a person who is, well, basically just doing that, you know, losing um, some of his hair. So, yeah, that would be a balding man. Y esa era la que les quería compartir porque me quedé, ah, ¿de verdad ya la conocen? Bueno, um, so, la otra parte que me parece bien interesante de esta lectura es esto de acá gets the better of him, see? The curiosity, the guy's curiosity gets the better of him. When you get the better of someone, it means that um, the situation basically wins. Si, en el caso, por ejemplo, acá, de, de que pues, estamos hablando de una situación en la que alguien está haciendo algo raro y al final eh, este hombre se ve involucrado, al menos eh, se ve interesado en lo que está pasando, significa, verdad, que pues... Eh, la situación, el, 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 el suceso, al final termina eh, superando, digamos, el límite que el mismo hombre se puede poner. Entonces, when you get the better of someone, it can happen in situations like this. When curiosity wins or when you are getting into an argument. Like, for example, if you start a fight or start arguing with someone and this person gets mad at you, then that means that you get the better of that person. Entonces, significa verdad que Básicamente su, su, se ve superado, nos vemos superados por eh, la situación y puede ser, como les digo, en, principalmente en cuestiones así como de curiosidad, cuando la curiosidad gana y también cuando estamos hablando de situaciones molestas, cuando yo me molesto con alguien y eso al final pues me termina superando y hace que yo reaccione de forma negativa. So that's when something gets the better of me. All right, so get the better of someone will be that. So. Um, I think that I'm going to read this one. However, we're not going to have enough time to explain it, but yeah, we're going to go with a laugh. So Valentine's Day gift. Johnny asked his friend, Tony, whether he had bought his wife anything for Valentine's Day. Yes, came the answer from Tony, who was a bit of a, um, a Cubanist, Cubanist. I've bought her a belt and a bag. That was very kind of you, Johnny added. I hope she appreciated the thought. Tony smiled and he replied, so do I. And hopefully the vacuum cleaner will work better now. Sí. <laughs> ok, el que entendió, entendió, ¿verdad? <laughs> Básicamente, lo que, de lo que trata, eh, bueno, no sé, la, Lorena, ¿usted qué fue lo que entendió? That he is giving a gift because... He needs that he, she works more. Porque, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. That's bad. Sí, el, el punto es que le dio, ¿verdad? Un eh, cincho y una 
bolsa, <risa> ¿sí? Yeah. Pero el cincho y la bolsa no son para ella, sino que son un cincho y una bolsa para la, eh, para la aspiradora. Ajá, yeah, aspiradora. ¿sí? Para la aspiradora. Entonces, no son para ella, para la aspiradora. Entonces, yeah, that's, that's the joke there. You see, once again, using words that have like different uses or different applications and being creative with them. So that's the idea. That's the idea that we have when we learn a different language. But well, uh, for now, that is it. The good thing is that we are up to date. Sí, ya no debemos clases, so that's nice. Um, so for now, that's all that we had. Thank you guys very much for your attention and participation in this evening's class. I hope that you have an amazing evening and I also hope I'll see you on Monday. So have a really good night. Take care and see you next one. You too. Bye. Bye-bye for now. Okay.